Hey guys, and welcome back to video three. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is we're gonna be coding the uh, kind of client side of this. So connecting to the server. Uh, I know we already coded a client, but we're gonna code like the network aspect of the client so that it can connect to the server. Uh, it's not as much code, it's a bit more straightforward. And then we're just gonna test out sending very basic information to the server and hopefully getting some back see if that's working okay and then in the next video we're going to be connecting this so like the little user interface we created with moving that block around in the first video we're going to be connecting that um, so that we can have multiple clients running and we can see like different blocks moving on each screen okay so that will involve a bit more work um, hopefully by video five we'll have like a fully working kind of game that's working over the network okay that's the goal so within this video, I just want to start by saying on this server class here, or sorry, server file, I did actually forget two lines of code in the last video. So after this accept break in threaded client, just need to add this print lost connection and then connection dot close. All this is doing is once we break out of this threaded client, we're just letting the uh, we're just going to print this to the console so we can see what it looks like. And then we're going to close that connection um, so that we can possibly reopen it in the future. Okay really straightforward that's all you gotta add so just make sure you add that before moving on okay so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file um, and i'm gonna call this network okay now you don't have to put what i'm going to in a new file it's just a lot easier so that's why i'm gonna do that so let's do network and in here we're gonna import socket now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna code a class that is gonna be responsible for connecting to our server and this just makes it like so i can reuse this class in the future and you guys could reuse this class in the future um, and it's just a bit cleaner and nicer and that's the way i like to do things so we're gonna say class network again call this whatever you want and in here we're just gonna set an initialization function uh we'll take actually as network do we need anything in network uh no i think we'll just leave it like that so we're gonna say self.client equals socket dot socket it's going to be the exact same arguments as last time so we'll say socket dot uh, if net i think that is that what it is if underscore net uh af underscore i net okay and then we'll do socket dot sock stream like that okay now we're going to define the server and the port again so self dot server equals uh self dot port equals five 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 now for the server this again this number has to be the same as the one you used in the server uh what do you call it the server file here so no matter what like no matter where you actually are um like what client you're using this number is going to stay the same because this is the server you're connecting to it's not the client's address uh we don't actually have to define the client's address anywhere it'll automatically get that for us okay so what we're going to do now uh we have client server port we need to do this self.addr equals and then we're going to say server so self.server and then self.port in here okay and then self. what do you call it self.id is going to be equal to self.connect okay uh now you guys actually let's just do self.connect for right now and we'll talk about why i was going to add this id later once we add that functionality to the server okay essentially i wanted to have an id uh, that was returned here or like that was stored in this network object just because we are gonna have to like be sending an id to each of our clients so they know if they're like player one or player two but we'll do that later um because we don't really we can't really do that yet okay so we've called this connect method so we need to write that now so let's say define connect okay and in here i believe we should probably be given actually like, it's probably fine to just do self right now and what we can do is we can do self.client.connect okay and then in here we can do self.addr now we're going to throw this in a try uh, and accept just in case you know this isn't working so we'll say try we'll say accept uh and is are we gonna do socket error um let's say accept and we'll just pass right there okay uh just in case this doesn't work so we'll try this we'll try to connect uh accept pass now once we actually connect what we're going to do is we're going to return um i'm just looking at my other screen right now self.client.receive and then we'll do 2048.decode okay so what this is going to do uh i'll talk about this because it might be a little bit confusing is when we connect uh we want to actually send some kind of information immediately back to the object that connected to us so like for example let's go in this oh, i didn't mean to close that uh let's go into server here and you can see when we initially connect we're not sending any information until we receive something now that's fine but when we connect 
we should really send some kind of like validation token or like ID back to our network object or back to our client. So what I'm going to do in here, I'm just like con dot send. Okay. And then in here, what we're going to type is, let's see, what should we really type here? Um, str dot in code. And then here we'll just say connected like that. Okay. Uh, just so we know that we did indeed connect. So that means if we set this equal to a value, so self dot, uh, I don't know, let's say ID equals self dot connect. What will happen is when we connect, uh, we'll return that string connected. So this will get connected. And since it's encoded, we need to decode it, obviously. So if we want to print actually in here, self dot ID, it should say like connected. Okay. Let's see if that works. Okay. So now that we actually have that, um, Let's see if we can connect to the server and then we'll deal with sending information from the client to the server as opposed to just getting it from the server. Okay. I know it's a bit confusing right now. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do this. Um, so let's try this Okay, So we're going to say N equals network. And we'll just type this at the bottom of the script. Uh, we won't do this after we'll delete this just for testing purposes. And then we're just going to say, uh, actually, that's probably all we need to do because it'll just print our ID. Okay. So let's create a configuration for network. Uh, so new configuration type network in here and then select that path and then let's test if this is working. So remember what I said when we're going to connect right uh, to our server, what we have to do is first run that server script. So let's run the server script here waiting for connection server started. Okay, let's run this network script now. Uh, invalid argument was supplied s dot listen to hmm. Okay, so I had a quick look here. Uh, I realized the mistake was I was actually running this server two times. So obviously that's not going to work for us. So we can put two back in this listen. I'm not sure if you guys will see if I left that in the video or not. Uh, but let's go to network. And we also need to change this to AF instead of IF. I don't know why I typed IF. I literally said AF when I was typing it, but that's fine. Uh, and we have server. I'm actually running it right now. So make sure you guys run that. And then let's run network and see if this works. Okay, sweet. So um, I know it doesn't seem like much, but you can check here if we go to server, it says connected to and then gives us that address. Uh, and it's also printing out some other thing that I honestly don't know what that means. Uh, and then it's saying disconnected and lost connection. Sweet. That's actually really good. And that means that we're everything is working. And you can also see that we have connected being printed here. So that means when we connect to the server, we're actually getting the value that it's sending. So we're getting this uh, connected. And we're printing it out, uh, decoding it all fine. So that's really awesome. So now the only next step is to actually send information to the server and keep like a loop going, like sending, receiving, sending, receiving, sending, receiving. Now let's actually just test um, if I run this again, uh, you can see again, obviously it's working again. So this is the server just continually is running. I don't actually have to stop this unless I want to make modifications to it. Uh, so let's just keep that running for now. And let's add something to our network class. So in our network class, we're going to define a method that's going to be send. Now this method is going to be very useful later on because it's going to save us a lot of time. So in send, we're just going to take a string, which is going to be data. Okay. And all we're going to do in here is we're going to try to self dot client dot send. And we're going to say data str actually dot encode data. And then we're going to get a reply from that server. So we're going to say return. So exact same thing that we're doing here self.client.receive uh, 2048.decode and we'll accept and I believe this is a socket error. Yeah, it is socket.error as E and just print E. So if we get into some error where, you know, either we're sending or we're receiving and it's not working, let's just print that error out to the screen so we have a look at what that really means. So now let's do a test. Um, and trying to send information to the server and then get something back. Okay. Now the information that we're getting back should just be the same information because that's what we have in server. We're just going to send exactly what we got right back. Right. So um, it doesn't really make sense right now to do that, but we'll talk about like what we can, what valid information we can send, how to send receive information in the next video when we connect up the client uh, to the thing. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say n dot send and we'll print n dot send. Okay. And we'll print n dot send again. And let's just send like a few bits of information and see if everything is indeed working. Okay. So n dot send. Uh, and then in here, let's just type hello and we'll type working. Okay. 
and see if this works. So we have, actually we should have, yes, yeah, server is working. Well, let's run our client. And you can see we get connected, hello working. And if we come here, it says received hello, sending hello, received working, sending working. So that's awesome. Um, that means our network class is working, sending information, receiving information is working, server is working. Uh, and now the only thing that's left to do essentially is to connect that up to this. So use this network class in some meaningful way here, and then to actually store information on the server and then send that information to multiple clients, which we'll be doing in future videos. Uh, so that's going to be it for this video. We got the network class working, hooked up to the server. Um, I find this stuff really cool personally. Like I'm really excited about doing this and showing you guys how to do this. I think it's really awesome that within like a few minutes, you can just set up a basic server on your local network and send and receive information. Um, and it's only like, how many lines of code is this? Like a hundred, not very many. Um, but anyways, let me know what you guys have thought of this video and if you're excited for the next one and I will see you there. Oh, 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 oh,